Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brintha Kuter, Head of Solutions at Vodafone Business. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about industrial connectivity and how that is important in powering manufacturing sites with reliable connectivity for your cloud solutions. So let's talk about the importance of reliable connectivity. If we look at some of the recent data, about two-thirds of leading-edge use cases implemented in Lighthouse sites worldwide are enabled by cloud technologies. 50% of those are around improving productivity. 30% of those are around improving operational equipment efficiency. And up to 70% of those are around improving the cost of quality. So, Using all of that means managing all of the data coming off of the sites and ensuring reliable cloud connectivity for analysis. So what we're able to do is provide the reliable, secure connectivity to enable those cloud transformations. But before we start on that, let's talk about some of the challenges that you may be facing when you think about digital transformation, and in particular when you're thinking about having a reliable, secure connectivity. Firstly, when we talk about your uh, assets, and in particular, uh, existing assets, these are located in multiple sites, in multiple locations, with varying ages. That means that you have inconsistent data coming off of these assets, and you have an aging requirement that you need to manage what your investment is going to be around those assets. Secondly, if we think about complex integrations, there's a lot of data that needs to be integrated and how it's going to be integrated across those sites. So you could be using terrestrial communications, satellite communications, fixed communications, and wireless communications. That adds a, another level of complexity when we talk about integrations. Next, you have changing customer expectations. So customers are looking for lots of data not necessarily in real time, but constant flow of information, in particular when it comes to logistics or asset tracking or supply chain concerns. So customers are quite demanding and they're looking for more of that information throughout your site. And then if we look at the need for digital training and culture, on your premises, you're going to have varying levels of experience and expertise and familiarity with digital tools. But what we're finding more and more are Workers are looking for these tools that they use in their personal life, also in their work life. That means mobile phones, tablets, other types of devices that are connected and that share content like video or any type of um, analytics data that they can be improved in their performance on the job. Then fifth, we have the emerging trade routes. What we're seeing more and more, especially after Corona and COVID, is a lot of nearshoring. So there's different approaches to how the supply chain is managed versus what was previously done with a lot of things out of China, particularly in Europe, a lot more nearshoring in Eastern Europe and having full visibility of the supply chain of where things are breaking down. And then lastly, around uh, cybersecurity. Um, I think the easiest way to address this is when we talk about devices that are not connected, they can't be managed, they can't be monitored, so they're at risk. So if we look at cybersecurity, we need to look at having connected devices, regular backups, regular tracking, regular information about what's happening on the shop floor and around particular threats that may be coming through. So what do we do at Vodafone to help you with all of that? Well. Firstly, one of the things that we can do is we can offer you a mobile private network. What is a mobile private network? Well, it's a private or reserve coverage um, that, is, that can include network slicing, and it guarantees capacity for your wireless devices. Um, this ensures connectivity of those devices that are on your premises. Um, with this, we're able to offer assured service level of Agreements. This means that we're able to ensure that these devices will be always on within this uh, perimeter. We're able to provide a, um, a good amount of connection density, meaning your 5G devices will be able to connect and you'll be able to carry over 500,000 devices per cell. And then we can also look at speed and capacity with up to 10 gigabytes 
of large volumes of data being shared very quickly. In particular, when we're talking about more near real-time applications, this becomes especially relevant for customers. If we're looking at manufacturing facilities, operating robots, operating other equipment, this is when that near-time data transfer is going to be even more important. And then lastly, AI and video interactions. Um, so this is helping with data capture, helping you to parse that data on the edge. It's helping you to manage that data and that data flow to run your machine learning models in the cloud and take advantage of Gen AI capabilities. So these are all the things that we can help you achieve and help your uh, teams actually deploy these. So again, just to reiterate, some of the things around mobile private networks are around the latency, around improving efficiencies, around operational improvements, around employee engagement, uh, around these digital tools. And then lastly, when we talk about sustainability and in particular around carbon footprints, one of the things that we're also able to do is help you take advantage of some of the tools um, like what AWS has to offer around what your data is, is giving you insights to in your supply chain of how information is being tracked and stored in a more reliable manner. So then if we look at some of the challenges that customers are facing, um, if we look at this, there's uh, a lot around campus networks. And in campuses, we're talking about things that could be plants that have multiple facilities, factories that could be in multiple locations, even in the same city. We're talking about ports that have multiple facilities um, or, or operations within a port. We're talking about offshore uh, facilities. We're talking about mines. We're talking about chemical storage. All of these types of environments lend themselves to being a dedicated campus. What that means is a campus network can be closed. It can be local, and it can have this wireless network that's exclusively available for the campus. Companies can decide which type of infrastructure they would like to deploy. And I think what's in particular important in Germany is the um, 5G frequency auction that was launched in 2019. The German Federation um, network agency set aside 100 megahertz portion of the radio spectrum just for corporations here in Germany. So what that means is, is they're able to take advantage of a government incentive to be able to use these networks themselves. So um, I think that allows for MPN to be more, or mobile private networks to be deployed in campus environments more easily here. Additionally, what we're able to offer is network slicing, which makes for exclusive 5G subnetworks. And I think this is important as we think about the latency around particular connected devices and how we might want to utilize those. Um, this also allows for leveraging public and pri private infrastructure um, when it comes to networks and keeping that in a way where it's logically separate as well. So that means as a customer, if you're having a campus set up, you can still use the public 5G network, but then have a private portion of that for your own use. And then if we look at some of our use cases, we have uh, BASF in Germany, and they're a multinational chemicals company, one of the largest globally. And they came to us with a challenge. They had um, over 290 hecta, hecta acres. Um, on their campus, and they wanted to create a 5G blueprint that they could deploy in one of their facilities and then use that as the blueprint across other facilities. They have 80 countries in which they operate. If we look at what BASF was looking at, um, they wanted to, to meet the needs of their facilities, so near real-time um, worker communications for safer operations. Uh, with chemicals, it's very important that people know where people are, white hats, yellow hats, people know who's where, when. Uh, secondly, managing large amounts of data coming from equipment and sensors uh, with the fluid flows, knowing what's where, knowing where the cameras are, um, and that they're working properly, monitoring the right types of equipment, and then the robotics, what robots are, are where, uh, where are they working, are they fu fully utilized. And then lastly, 
also looking at the cable infrastructure. So BASF was also in particular concerned about how do we ensure that reliable connectivity, putting in our own fiber or, or managing that is a huge expense, as well as something that would cause a lot of disruption on site with construction. Um, so they wanted to manage that as well. So what our Vodafone solution was able to do was actually provide a fully private 5G network covering the full area. And this was really important for BASF because it's a, quite a large site. Um, they were able to then think about how they could reduce incidents that compromise their, their worker safety and at least be monitoring that more effectively and creating audit trails. They could manage cyber threats because they could look at more equipment being tracked and online. Um, they could look at physical intrusions as well and think about how they could better utilize their cameras and the data coming off of those cameras and look at um, different people and people flows to manage uh, any threats that might be coming up. And then lastly, looking at the deployed environment of applications, so to really think about how could they better utilize the data that was coming in and they were collecting on-site to more cost-effectively transfer that data as and when they needed to. So as a customer for BASF, having this mobile private network and having this campus infrastructure allowed them to think more about the use cases that they could deploy when it comes to digital transformation. Let's talk a little bit more about some of those use cases. So if we look at some of these use cases that I have on the screen, I'll start from the, the left-hand side of the screen, video surveillance. So there's a lot of data that comes from video surveillance, and in particular, there's a lot of infrastructure that's already in place when it comes to video surveillance that could be fixed infrastructure, or there can be other um, devices that are deployed that can also support with uh, cellular uh, transfer of, of video surveillance data. What's really important is having some logic applied to that video data and understanding what's happening and having a good amount of clarity around that. So having some good, um, good capture of the data and good analytics of the data. And we've deployed some solutions that uh, help with that and also deploy them in a way that customers can look at video surveillance data, use their existing equipment, connect it up, utilize the cloud um, to do some of the analytics and think about some of the predictive or uh, other types of behavior that might be indicative of uh, concerns that they need to address. Next, if we look at mission critical or push to talk applications. This is really important when you have workers in many different sites or even on a single site, but in uh, independent locations. Oftentimes these workers are facing challenges and may not have the full support of the team and need to address a particular problem. The mission critical operations provides a closed network in which they can communicate with other people who are on that network, express when they have a problem, ask for guidance and advice and solve the problem without having to perhaps go back into an office, look for further information and then come back out and solve that. Um, so those are, those are also really efficient for time management of, of teams on site. Then if we look at remote experts, again, this is uh, related to having a full overview of the site and being able to understand how and when to deploy resources most effectively, utilizing potentially some of the video surveillance as well as some of the push to talk capabilities. And then one of my favorites is traceability of tools. Now, one would imagine in manufacturing facilities, everybody knows where every tool is. In most cases, this is not true. So what happens is, is lots of pieces of equipment go missing, not intentionally, but oftentimes they're in different parts of the site. And it's often very expensive equipment and it needs to be inventoried at the beginning and the end of the day. So tracking that equipment, knowing you have the right tools before you go into the next job is really important. So it helps with improving that overall operational equipment efficiency if you're able to make sure that when you send someone to explore a problem, they have the right tools with them. 
Then if we look at fire and gas detection, again, when we talk about the different sensors that are available on site, fire and gas are two huge threats in a chemical facility, as you can imagine. So any changes in temperature are important. And also understanding if there are any anomalies with particular equipment that could be cropping up, that could alert someone to saying, hey, there's a potential fault in this equipment is also really, really important. So that's where some of the sensors come in. And then looking at the real-time AR, VR, uh, this is again due to some of the safety and security protocols, knowing that the right hats are in the right area at the right time, right? Um, making sure that you've also been able to create some audit trails around that. And then if we look at uh, 5G connected PLCs, that's also very important. I think this has been one of the use cases that has promoted uh, 5G usage in manufacturing facilities is actually getting the programmable logic controllers activated, getting the data off of equipment, especially historical data, looking at SCADA systems, making sure that all of that data can be released and utilized in cloud environments for other types of analytics and then push back down to the edge. And then lastly, if we look at uh, autonomous vehicles, I think more and more we're seeing vehicles used in different facilities. Uh, autonomous vehicles in particular, being able to plan their routes, having a good visibility of what they have with them, whether it's stock, whether it's tools, whether it's people, and knowing how that's moving through a site is extremely important, especially when you're talking about a large site of 290 hectares. So these are some of the use cases that we've been working on. And then if we think about the future focus or the refinery of the future and where this can go, I think we have quite a few use cases where in red, the Vodafone products can help enable these use cases of the future and in gray, some of the third party services that can support that. I think when we look at the future, some of the things that, that we see in the future are especially important to us are keeping workers safe and managing that sustainability. And those are some of the areas where Vodafone, in particular when you've deployed this campus infrastructure, we can look more closely at some of those use cases and how um, we can help different customers in deploying those solutions. And then I think when we um, look at monitoring and especially the large amounts of data, what Vodafone is also able to do is offer quite a lot of analytics around the equipment. So if we're thinking about all of your equipment, looking at your network, your network performance, knowing how it's performing also helps you know that your devices are connected properly, that your infrastructure is actually operating, that you're not having outages, that you're able to manage any sorts of backups that you may need to, to manage as well. So when we think of the overall refinery of the future, it's far more efficient improving both the operational efficiency and worker safety, but also looking more at the future where it becomes much more automated and there is a control center that is able to offer a lot more analytics for customers to make informed decisions. And then if we look at some of our solution blueprints, um, these are some of the areas in which Vodafone can help our customers. So in the private radio and core services, so this is really looking at some of the mobile private networks or even multi-edge cloud solutions and looking at how we can ensure your fixed connectivity and, and ensuring that we can provide security as well. Then looking at cloud services and secur security, looking at how we can work with other partners that are here on the AWS stand that can help deploy secure solutions, but also understanding how that's going to be affecting your overall performance of your, your network as well as all of your equipment. So then you can start to look at your full security profile in a more, much more enhanced and enriched way. And then IoT services, so this is actually thinking about IoT and, and 5G in particular, that this can be used on your facilities and that you can have 5G devices including PLCs or Modbus um, devices that can be implemented in your facilities to help connect your different equipment and get the data that you need off of that equipment. And then lastly, some of the value add services that we can offer around that. So, oops, I think I've, my slides have jumped a little bit. Um, 
yeah, so just to reiterate, when we talk about some of these things, we talk about on the private uh, radio and core private license spectrum, as well as 5G and 4G. When we start talking about our cloud and security, this is around our dedicated multi-edge cloud, distributed multi-edge cloud. So this is especially important when you're talking about facilities that run uh, over one country or multiple com countries and really wanting to be able to manage your data and how it's flowing, what you keep on the edge, what you keep in the cloud and how you manage that. Looking at AI, machine learning, gen AI, as well as analytics, not only on your equipment, but also in how you're utilizing that information. We have tools to support you with that as well. And then our IoT services, looking at IoT sensors that we can support you with, as well as some of the industrial IoT products and software and gateways that we can support you with. And then lastly, on the value add services, we have uh, some services around push to talk as well as uh, mobile dev device management, SD-WAN, and LAN that helps you connect up different facilities and different sites as well with FIX. So I would say when, we, when you think about Vodafone, you think about all the things that we can provide, what we're really looking at is a full set of managed services that we can offer you. So we can work with you as a customer to understand what your initial needs are, help you design and plan to ensure the right level of connectivity, the right level of security for your applications and your services, look at some of the proactive monitoring that you might need for some of your mission critical applications as well as some of the use cases that you may have going forward around AI and Gen AI and how to utilize that in your facilities, looking at some of the provisioning as well as uh, service management that you may need for the ongoing management of your devices in your facility. Um, so what we're able to do is provide a full wraparound um, to the services that we're able to offer you in a consultative manner that helps you make the most informed decision for secure and reliable connectivity. That's that. Thank you.